Hi guys, it is a nasty, cold, blah, winter day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, where I am miraculously still hiding from the various uh, real estate cops here in my little bivouac, freezing my ass. Getting ready to head back for another day selling Christmas trees to clueless morons here on this Friday, this cold winter Friday, December 9th, 2016, I believe. But before I head out into the cold, just going to do what I do every Friday, which is bring you my economic meltdown roundup rant, where I simply go in to the pages of my email to look at these various newsletters letting me know how this planet is, has been heading directly into a brick wall at 23,000 miles an hour while I have been selling Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons. Uh, before I dive in to my usual, I just had a couple of stray notes here that I've been meaning to uh, talk about, so I might as well, this is a good time as any, here from the BBC mini version of this story actually, giraffes facing silent extinction as population plunges. A dramatic drop in giraffe populations over the past 30 years has seen the world's tallest land mammal classified as vulnerable to extinction. Numbers have gone from around 155,000 in 1985 to less than 100,000 in 2015, dropping steadily. The iconic animal has declined because of habitat loss, poaching, and civil unrest in many parts of Africa. Yes, the giraffe, like every other species of African that humans share the planet with, is one more Sub-Saharan African, you can kiss goodbye unless we figure out what to do about that little problem in Sub-Saharan Africa. And from Sub-Saharan Africa to the Arctic Circle, polar bear population could drop 30% in 40 years. Yes, I don't know which button to push. Yes, I guess the polar bear population could drop 30% in 40 years, no shit Sherlock, or it could drop 40% in 30 years, or it could drop 100% in 10 years. But whatever the drop, the polar bear, like the giraffe, is one more of our fellow earthlings. We can kiss goodbye. Okay. Um, you know, in, in all of my roundups, I've, I've mentioned this magazine, Grist, before, this environmental magazine, Grist. Stuff that matters. And uh, I like the sound of this. I don't believe it. A, a TV show, Grist calling the eco-Nazis attention to, there's a new dystopian show to channel all your real life fears, incorporated a new sci-fi series produced by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck is set in 2074 after climate change has led to the collapse of the U.S. government. The nation is now run by Spiga Biotech, 
a monolithic corporation that controls the world's resources and its people. Yes, um, for those who work for Spiga, life is all self-driving cars and securely gated communities. Everyone else is stuck in the nightmarish red zones where violence and scarcity rule and 12 million Americans from the, well, United Statesians have fled for Canada. In the pilot's opening moments, you'll enjoy this one, Vegematic. In the pilot's opening moments, a newscaster announces that Canada will build a wall to keep the refugees from the U.S. out of Canada. Yes, uh, the main character is a Spiga exec with a secret. He navigates a violent, uncertain future in which government has failed to protect its people from climate disaster and corporate takeover. As far as science fiction goes, this one is uncomfortably close. Yes, uh, I might actually have to watch this TV show Incorporated for a peek into the future, but that's the future. Let's look at the present. And where are we going to start uh, my regular roundup today? <clears throat> Why don't we start with Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth? Uh, let's see. What happened to uh, Endangered Earth? Oh, here it is. Just uh, figuring out where to click here. They start off with their cheering on a victory at Standing Rock. Yes, uh, but as they say, we have not seen the last of this outrageous project, but the center will continue our strong support of the water protectors and help fight this pipeline until it is defeated. Yes, which, uh, no shit, Sherlock, that uh, story going right into start fighting Trump with our new action toolkit. Time is running out before we have a President Trump in the White House, a disaster for our planet, wildlife, and civil rights. This, uh, this week, the center launched our Trump Action Toolkit as a fast and easy way to sign, to stand together, sign our new Pledge of Resistance to Trump. Yes, and start the, uh, the good luck, buddy, fight against Trump. Uh, one of the fights you're going to see already uh, attorneys general moved to weaken habitat protection to squash regulations that give endangered species life-saving protections. 18 Republican attorneys general filed suit last week targeting the ability of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to protect areas where endangered species used to be but don't any more. Uh, so you see what you see where this is going. Uh, yes, from uh, that, let's look at deep sea mining. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A victory for the ocean depths. Under a legal settlement, settlement under <laughs> under a legal settlement secured last week by the center as a result of our 2015 lawsuit, the Trump 
administration must conduct in-depth analyses of risks to wildlife and ocean ecosystems before it approves deep sea mining projects. Uh, the deep ocean is believed to contain billions of dollars worth of rare earth metals and minerals. Several countries and corporations are pushing deep sea mining projects in the South Pacific where marine scientists fear it could devastate deep water ecosystems. Uh, quoting this dreamer, this agreement will be an important step in protecting sea turtles, whales, and other wildlife threatened by deep sea mining. Just get used to this word, this term, deep sea mining. This will be a regular uh, feature of my rants as the end times unfold on this planet. Here's yet another attack on wolves, the never ending. Um, this is a, a, a uh, rider attached to this year's annual spending bill is a disastrous provision that would strip federal protection from wolves in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Minnesota, Michigan, and Wyoming. R Republicans have been trying to sneak this rider through for years, uh, caving into the pressure of anti-wildlife forces. So, it, this whole thing about these riders, I need to do more rants on this. This is what, what they're talking about is, is where they, you know, they make like uh, a, a 10,000 page spending bill. And then, like, on page 8,952, they put in the middle of a paragraph one sentence in, in the middle of something that has nothing to do with wolves. They put in uh, federal protection for wolves uh, will be ended. And then what are you going to do? Uh, just shelve the entire uh, big ass bill. This is a very common bullshit way of the uh, New World Order, the uh, global industrial economy to get the, these uh, bullshit laws through, these riders. There ought to be a law. Yeah. Okay, what is on the minds of the Washington Post? And their uh, weekly, uh, <clears throat> and their weekly ecological collapse roundup. Here, here you go. I'm going to be talking about this more at length on, mo on Monday's rant. Just to mention this news: Trump named Scott Pruitt, the Oklahoma Attorney General, suing EPA on climate change to head the EPA. Yes, Pruitt has spent much of his energy as Attorney General fighting the very agency he is being nominated to lead. As I say, we will talk more about that on Monday, about the disaster this means. Uh, here, yeah, I guess I'll just keep Paul to the no shit Sherlock button through, throughout this list of stories from those eco-Nazis of the Washington Post. Science just gave us more proof that destroying the environment can spread diseases to humans. Yet another study clearly demonstrates the way 
deforestation drives infectious disease in humans. I've talked about this in depth on Wednesday, but it certainly, uh, it certainly bears repeating from pole to pole, twin low sea ice records have scientists stunned. <laughs> scientists don't know what to make of paired Arctic and Antarctic sea ice lows. Do you think so? Here we go. Indonesia just made a huge move to protect the climate. Indonesian President Joko Widodo. You absolutely have to love that name, and, and I'm not making up a name. The guy's name is Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo has announced a moratorium on all activities that could damage the nation's peat-filled wetlands. D D D. Uh, I've already discussed several of these stories in my climate meltdown roundup rant. I don't know if I got to this story on Wednesday. Extreme rainfall risk could triple in the U.S. under climate change, scientists warn. U.S. residents may want to start preparing for a stormier future. Yes, uh, do you think so? Uh, and here it says that in fact the super storms could become up to five times more frequent in some areas. Yep, yep, yep. Then, of course, their coverage on the Standing Rock victory. But we're going to dive in to Mongabay.com's uh, Bay's dot com's newsletter leading off asking a question in a headline the media megaphone does it help curb bad infrastructure projects well this is you know uh, kind of a takeoff on the Dakota access pipeline story about how important it is uh, to kill these things by, you know, covering them in the mass media. Well, you, you can see how, how well it usually does, but at least the Dakota Access uh, was one temporary victory. What is the bigger story? Uh, you know, Dakota Access Pipeline, a tiny little footnote on this planet, a tsunami of infrastructure development is putting global ecosystems, wildlife, and indigenous people at risk with 25 million, that, let's call it 16 million miles, 16 million miles of new roads planned by 2050, most in the developing world where most of the animals still live, add to the roads pipelines, hundreds of dams. Uh, in the Amazon, Mekong, and other river systems with their electricity used often by mega mining projects. As in the past, this tidal wave of construction is being heavily backed by national governments, greatly benefiting industry and international investors who have 
the national governments in their pockets, often at the cost of indigenous people, rural communities, wildlife, and habitat. And no shit, Sherlock, government and industry typically have large public relations budgets to promote such projects. Uh, and so many con conservationists trying to mitigate the harm of these ill-advised projects or, or, or even s to see them canceled or relying heavily on the media to achieve their aims. There you go. As infrastructure development rapidly accelerates, today's environmentalists are using all the media tools at their disposal, including Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So here is your eco-Nazi using YouTube to uh, petition about ill-advised infrastructure projects. If there is any clueless moron on this planet uh, believing uh, that a bunch of goddamn eco-Nazis talking about the shit that uh, Manga Bay talks about in their own blogs uh, is going to do a goddamn thing uh, about these 16 million miles of new roads going in on this planet. Got one thing to tell you. There will be some occasional little victories like the Standing Rock for every one step forward by environmentalists using YouTube and others, uh, other media to defeat these infrastructure projects. There are 16 million going forward. Yeah, uh, I don't know where I already am in my time. Uh, I just gotta, just gonna hit a few of few of these. This is their spin on sea ice extent tumbles around both poles in November. I think we have been over this one uh, many times. Um, I love this article on, on how chimps shitting are gonna, chimp shit is gonna save the planet. Alright, over 50% of sharks and rays in the Mediterranean Sea are at risk of extinction. Okay, from the Mediterranean, the No Shit Sherlock button in the Mediterranean Sea to Peru. Peru pledges tougher stance against illegal timber. Peruvian, govern, the Peruvian government estimates indicate that a full 90% of all timber from Peru is illegally harvested. And, 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 and you know, and the other 10% is legally harvested. I mean, what's the fucking difference? Oh, Jesus. Gee, let's get out. Which button? The no shit Sherlock button. Australian real retailers accused of misusing the responsible palm oil label on their palm oil products. Do you think so? Major retailers such as Woolworths and Coles say their own brand products have been certified sustainable by the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil. However, Palm Oil Investigations 
I like that. Palm oil investigations has called the legitimacy of those claims into question. Yes, do you think so? Uh, some story that's too complicated to get into about land reclamation putting the environment at risk. Uh, kind of a cousin to land grabbing. No shit. Sherlock, I mentioned this, I guess this is their continuing story uh, about the grasslands in U.S. Great Plains being destroyed at an alarming rate. Yep, yep, yep. The conversion of grasslands uh, looking at about 53 million acres per year compromises the ecological services provided by the Great Plains such as the filtering of trillions of gallons of water that goes on to be used as drinking water for millions of people and help support healthy fisheries in the Gulf of Mexico. Healthy fisheries in the Gulf of Mexico. Anyway guys, uh, I got I gotta wrap this up. Uh, I'm, I'm suspicious that there's some goddamn real estate agent sneaking around out in the yard and uh, oh lord I, I, anyway I'm not gonna get off get off on that rant I gotta wrap it up because anyway me and a little dog need to what do we need to do we need to head to the Optimus Club Christmas tree lot to sell Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons. And I will be assuming I'm not locked out of this house uh, tonight. I will be back tomorrow with my clueless moron roundup rant. Uh, before I head to the Christmas tree lot tomorrow for the last weekend of the Christmas tree selling season. Hallelujah. Are you ready to rock and roll, little dog? For this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant, smoke them if you got them. Because why? Because we are so fucked. Bye, guys. That you like the the Samsung the Samsung big screen TV box. How big was this smart? The Samsung Smart TV. I need this is a 55 inch Samsung Smart TV. I've I've mentioned this in rants and and wacky conspiracy rants about how you better not talk about private information in front of your Samsung Smart TV. It's right there in the owner's manual that uh, anything you say in front of your Samsung smart TV could very well be reported to various law enforcement agencies. And anybody who thinks that is a wacky conspiracy theory got one thing to tell you. Big Brother is here, and he is watching you. Bye, guys.